The Detroit Lions are making those cuts in order to get to the 53-man roster. Some of them good, some of them maybe not so good. Let's Talk Lions. Welcome back to an all new episode here at Let's Talk Lions. My name is Jay. Thank you for hanging out, guys. Hey, if you want, you can go buy this hat, the official Let's Talk Lions hat, through the link in the description below. You click on that bad boy, go get yourself a hat. Tag me on Instagram, Twitter, wherever it is that you're socially in cyberspace. We'll get that out, get that going. Buy yourself a Let's Talk Lions hat. Now, friends, today we are watching the Detroit Lions making a bunch of moves by releasing, waving, cutting different guys on the squad. So there are nine big cuts that came in today. I would say about four of them are fairly notable, where five of them were just sort of like we saw it coming. However, I wanted to break down a few of these notable cuts. The nine guys released earlier this morning were Rashad Perriman, Damian Ratley, Victor Bolden, Mike Ford, Evan Heim, Elijah Holder, Miles Brown, Dan Skipper, and Terrell Crosby. So I picked three of these guys that I wanted to talk about. First and foremost, Rashad Perriman. I made a video about Perriman just the other day, all about why I thought he was going to get cut. A video that one Texas Buckeye nut did not enjoy. He said, am I watching pillow talk or sports talk? Come on. And you know what? I am pretty good at pillow talk. Just ask my wife. But as Kesha once said, if you're here to throw shade, then you're in the wrong place. If you're here to throw shade, then you're in the wrong place. Yeah, you're punking my side. Perriman has been nothing to write home about. And I kind of talked about his stats coming into this year and that it was kind of a topsy-turvy. I thought that he would actually pan out in Detroit based on his speed, based on where he's been and some of the QBs he's had. However, Perriman just couldn't get it done. In fact, here in Detroit, you have a wide receiver core that has zero flash, not even a standout wide receiver one. Perriman had the opportunity to do something significant, to be significant here, and it just sort of flopped for him. I mean, the guy was expected to show up here and be wide receiver too. That's where we were putting all our chips. And he has just fallen to the wayside. He didn't do anything to prove his worth offensively. And he was the first guy to get cut this morning. Our wide receiver core is a flawed position group. It's been something that I've tried to shy away from looking at because I am a little worried about them. I want to believe like Robert the Bruce but alas, I do believe that Hawkinson and our running backs are going to see a ton of targets this season. A second cut that took place was Mike Ford. And this one, I was quite bummed about. This one hurts. Mike Ford's a guy who has shown up all three preseason games. He has dogged it all summer long. He has shown significant improvement. He has really sparked and become alive out there on the field, seen him coming through in the clutch multiple areas, multiple times. Watching him get cut was a complete surprise to me. He was a guy that I thought had surpassed the bubble, had made it in, would be on the team. But obviously there's something going on behind scenes that we don't see, that we don't know that the coaching staff looks at and says, you're not our guy. My only assumption is that he doesn't fit the coaching staff's need for versatility. He was expected to be potentially our starting nickel corner. However, you kind of look at it. I don't know if his versatility on the outside is enough to keep him around. He was also an excellent gunner. Special teams saw him doing that, working it, playing well. I was surprised by the releasing of Mike Ford. Another team is going to swoop in and snag him and they will be better for it. Lastly is Terrell Crosby. The Crosby situation as a whole has been intriguing to say the least. We obviously came into the season having Decker at the left tackle position. Then we go ahead, we draft Panay Sewell, place him at the right tackle position, and now you have a guy like Crosby who is homeless on the line. Crosby wanted to be traded. He sits out of OTAs. It's a weird vibe coming from him. He obviously does not get traded, and now you see him last week in the preseason game against Indianapolis. 
not great not a great performance lets up a sack that ends up actually breaking the thumb of tim boyle he now has to go get surgery and crosby's just not been in it now I have seen people arguing for keeping Crosby around. I've seen people arguing on the opposite side. All in all, the move has been made. So there you have it. They obviously looked at Crosby. 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 I don't know why I keep saying Crosby. It's a little infuriating. Campbell hit Crosby pretty hard Monday at the presser. He comes in and just says, we didn't feel like he was one of the best players. So there you have it. When your head coach is looking at you saying, yeah, you're not you're not what we need. You're not what we want. I mean, you're going to be shipped out, shipped off. But it is interesting because tackles are tough to come by right now. And having that depth is really important. The fact that we're letting a tackle go and then we're going to sit back on waivers looking for somebody, that's a dicey place to be. Either way, Campbell did make it clear that we will be hanging out at the waiver line, kind of like the cool kids over by the seesaws in the third grade. A very underrated playground structure. All this being said, the Lions are going to be lingering about the waiver wire, looking for wide receivers, and I believe another tackle, some sort of depth there. Offensively speaking, that's kind of where I'm looking at us and there is a lot to do. Campbell came out, talked about the fact that, yeah, there's going to be some guys on this team that haven't been here before. In other words, get ready, waiver wire, here we go. I'm not going to lie, I missed the days when you just knew you had Marvin Jones Jr. and Kenny Galladay running out there. But alas, one cannot choose to live in the past because that is where you can only go downhill. Backsliding, one could say. The Jenga pieces are falling as we're trying to slim down this roster. These are just the first nine to go. There's going to be more. I'll continue to keep you updated. But how do you guys feel about some of these cuts? How do you guys feel about Mike Ford specifically? That one is probably the one that I'm like, yeah, I don't like that. Don't agree with that. But how do you guys feel? Drop it in the comments. You know I'm looking forward to reading it. And as always, I'll catch you next time on Let's Talk Lions.